Well, okay, welcome to the network management session, uh, Netmaster and the benefits of enabling Zert. Um, Anna and Steve from Broadcom are um, on the call to answer any questions, and we're going to start now. This is Netmaster and the benefits of enabling Zert. My name is Anna Clayton, and I am a software engineer working at Broadcom on the Netmaster development team. And I'm presenting with Steve Bierman, who is also a software engineer on the Netmaster team. What is ZERT? ZERT is ZOS encryption readiness technology that was introduced with ZOS V2 R3 communication server. ZERT provides information about the cryptographic network protection state of all connections that terminate on the ZOS system. Note that data is only given for the connections that terminate on the system. Any packet that just passes through on the system is not included. ZERT sits on top of the TCP IP stack to collect and report on cryptographic protection attributes for all the connections. Uh, note that you don't have to do anything special to the connection itself to set it up or gather data for it. ZERT is configured at the stack level. So what does ZERT provide? ZERT can be used to determine which network connections are protected and which ones are not. Not meaning that they're unencrypted, just meaning that they're not using one of the cryptographic protocols that ZERT recognizes. The data could be encrypted or decrypted by the application itself. ZERT also shows how the traffic is being protected. ZERT recognizes TLS, SSL, ATTLS, IPsec, or connections that are protected by a VPN network, and OpenSSH. ZERT can determine who the traffic belongs to. The information that's provided includes details such as the address space ID and the job name, so that you can determine where the traffic originated or is bound. And ZERT can provide information on whether the connections configurations adhere to your company's security policy. This information is valuable for determining regulatory compliance and for identifying connections that might need to have stronger cryptographic protection. ZERT reports its findings via SMF 119 records. These records can be queried using SMF or obtained using the real-time NMI or network management interface, which is a service that's provided to retrieve ZERT SMF records as they're generated. ZERP provides two types of SMF-19 uh, records, subtype 11, which is ZERT connection detail. Sometimes this is referred to as a ZERT discovery record, and subtype 12, which is ZERT summary, sometimes referred to as a ZERT aggregation record. How is ZERT configured? There are separate parameters in the TCP IP profile that control whether the Discovery or aggregation records are enabled. This is done with the global config statement and also where the SMF records should be written. This is accomplished with the SMF config statement or the net monitor statement. If you want to collect ZERT information, it's important to remember to not only enable ZERT discovery or aggregation, but also to enable recording to one or both of the SMF or real time NMI destinations since each have their own separate controls. Once ZERT is configured, the configuration settings can be displayed using the netstat config command. An example of the output through Netmaster is given in this slide. What does ZERT information look like? There are two subtypes of SMF 119 records produced by ZERT. The first, which was the original to the ZERT support, is the connection detail record. This record describes each connection, so there is one SMF record at least produced per connection. ZERT summary records were generated later and describe each active session at the end of the SMF monitoring interval. Sometimes the termination used for this is aggregation. COS aggregates all the cryptographic details for a session to one record per interval. Information such as byte counts, connection counts, etc. Netmaster only reads and reports on ZERT connection detail records, so that's where we'll focus when describing how Netmaster uses ZERT. A ZERT connection detail record contains uh, many attributes about the connection. The connection detail record always contains at least two sections, possibly more. 
The first section, which is always present, is the TCPIP identification section. This includes details such as the system name, the SysPlex name, the stack name, and the address space name. The second section is the ZERT connection comment section with some common details about the connection itself. It includes details such as the protocols that are used, the IP addresses and ports that are involved, byte counts, uh, job information, and date time values. The next sections are only present if they're relevant to that specific connection. So zero, one, or many of these sections could be included in the ZERT connection detail record. The first is the IP filtering section, which is only present if an active IP filter rule applies to the connection. The next is the TLS protection section, which is present if the connection is protected by TLS or SSL. Section five is the SSH protection section, which is present if the connection is protected by SSH. The next is the IPsec protection section, which is present if the connection is protected by IPsec. The final section is the X509 Distinguish Name section, which is only present if the connection is using a digital certificate. Multiple of these sections could be present. For example, if a connection is protected both by TLS and by VPN, it would have section four and section six. There are several events that can trigger a ZERT connection detail record to be written. These records are written for six different events. They are written at connection initiation to describe the cryptographic protection attributes. They are written to describe a change to a connection's cryptographic protection attributes. A record is written at connection termination. A separate record is written for a connection that initiates and then terminates very quickly. A record is written when a ZERT function is enabled and also when the ZERT functionality is disabled. A workloader session that contains a large number of very frequent short-lived connections could therefore generate very many ZERT connection detail records. So how does Netmaster utilize the ZERT data? At this point, I will pass control over to Steve Bierman, who will give a bit of a demo of this. Thank you, Anna, for that great overview of ZERT. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit of data that ZERT provides. And so you asked the question, well, then how does Netmaster utilize that data? Uh, Netmaster has always utilized SMF data, packet analyzer data, and data from Netstat and all other various things that IBM provide to us. And this just happens to be another piece to that puzzle. Personally, I always thought Netmaster, we broke it down in the various towers within Netmaster in the sense of um, diagnostics, historical summary, real time. And, you know, as a customer is using Netmaster, what is it that they're, they're doing with the product, right? And if they're looking at something uh, in a real time fashion, they're looking at uh, connection activity, or they want to do traces at that moment in time, I, I, I see that as a, a diagnostic feature, right? And what we have there is the uh, for dessert, we have this thing called the list connections, as we all know, which allows us to then look at active connections, which is um, the packet analyzer, as you know, which is capturing packets. What we use the packet analyzer in addition to, we've always used that in addition to SMF 119 records and, and, and combining that information, correlating that information together we could look at list connections and get that and, and specific data as, as far as those connections were concerned. The uh, the ZERT data now is just a, another piece to that puzzle. You know, it's another SMF record that's coming in. We already have the connection information that's been gathered, and we have the each connection in a, in a database such that then when the ZERT information comes in, we can then populate that connection uh, with that ZERT information. And so, as you can expect in the product, we have extensive search capabilities. 
to look at you know which are secured and which are not secured and what what kind of security attributes do they have and so what i'll do is is i'll uh give me an examples of, of how netmaster utilizes that data and then we get into historical you know we got this thing called the business applications in netmaster where you define you know, these connections and you wrap up what would be a business application criteria around that and then uh, we allow you to save up to seven days. It's up to you know the customer to, to dictate how much time they want to save the data, but we do allow up to seven days. We allow the, the customer to dictate which business applications are saved. You don't have to save all of them. You know, if you just have a business application that you deem to be very important, and that's the one you're focusing on, then you just can save those off. So with the IP history, that's the IP law. Uh, the current customers would know. Uh, we also have extensive search capabilities there. So you can imagine, once again, that was in the past driven by SMF 119 records. Now that we have the SMF ZERT records coming in, we can take that same data and populate with further information. And then we have beefed up our search criteria as far as the information that we're gathering from ZERT so that you can do searches, extended searches. And we'll see examples of that. Then we have uh, the encryp encryption summary, which is the summary view or a status at a glance part of the product. It allows you to, you know, at a very high level, get a view of what's really happening uh, in your network at that precise moment in time. Actually, that moment in time, as well as the SSI is capturing the data and keeping track of it in buckets. Okay, so as long as the, the, the SSI was up for six months, you would have six months worth of data of actual totals. Uh, activity of a particular secure data information. So what we'll do is we'll take a look and we have that in two different GUIs. We have the, the new web portal, which shows that off in a really nice way. And we also have the old 3270 manner, which will, you know, I'll show you an example of that as well. And last but not least, is going to be the real-time monitoring, which is uh, this is thing called the event detectors. Netmaster has always had event detectors, polling-based as well as you know, kind of real-time based, which is coming out of the packet analyzer. Uh, you can imagine then uh, what we've done is we've added, because now we've got the ZERT information coming in, we can create these event detectors that based upon specific criteria for connections, we can alert on that criteria and create, you know, alerts or send emails and do all those wonderful things that, you know, the event detectors allow us to do. So now, this is a screenshot of, of, of list connections, okay? And then, you know, if you're taking a look at, you know, I'm looking at a particular connection, I'm trying to focus as an example to diagnose a particular problem that's happening out there. You can see a substantial criteria, right? That, we can, that you can really zero in on what it is that you're looking for. And here I have highlighted that, okay, we have secured. Okay, but maybe you, you're only interested at this moment in time all the secured connections that are available, you know, within NetMaster that's being kept track by the packet analyzer. Likewise, you could have that secured value empty. And then what would happen is, is you would get a list of all connections. And then from there, then you can actually then decide. You can take a look and, and look at the view of the list connections, whether or not, oh, this connection is uh, secured and this connection is not secured. So, uh, you know, once again, on this criteria, you know, this connection allows you to, you know, uh, get really specific as to what you want to look for. And once again, the ZERT information allows us to then know which connection is actually secured and how it's secured. And so then you can actually focus on that as well. And we'll have uh, some screenshots to what that looks like as well. So then here we have a, a list connections, and I didn't put any criteria. So I have a list connections of all the connections. And then, as you can see, the I got a combination of secured connections and I got a combination of unsecured connections. So at this particular point in time, it allows me to then decide what I want to do with any one of these particular connections, right? On the right-hand side, you actually see that if it is secured connection, we tell you what version of the security that the, in the security level is an example. And one of the things that you can do here as well, you've always had the ability to sort on connections. And typically what that was is, you know, 
you could sort of bytes in and bytes out. And I think, you know, if you sort it on the bytes in and bytes out columns, you could see the, the high profile connections, the connections that were taking the most bytes as an example. If you sort it on the security, what you can see, then you can see the the level of security from the top down to the bottom. So you'd be able to see TLS version 1.3, then go to TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.1 and so on and so forth to all those that are not secured. So then allows you that capability to, to, to sort and mismatch and take a look at the information that's displayed on the screen. So then let's say I took a look at the list connections and the security equals yes. What I could do then is, is I could do an SD, which is the SD command looks is that looks at detailed information for the connection. And then the detailed information is where the ZERT comes from. What's going to happen is, is the, the, the top half of the screen is going to be all the packet analyzer information that it's captured. Then the SMF records from ZERT will be put into the record, into the database, and this is the information that you see there. So you can get a little view of, you know, what version that you're running with, what cipher you're running with. We'll see this in further slides. There's, there's, there's a lot more detailed information that we can provide as well. I bring this up in the um, list connections into the, the help as an example, and it's not only in the list connections, it's actually throughout the product. And I think it's an underused portion of the product. It's help. And there are, there's going to be, you know, 30, 40 new fields when you list connection of all this information about, you know, the, the ZERT and the specific, what, the, what does that mean, the initial cipher? What does FIPS mean? And what is, you know, all these, all these different fields that we're you know, presenting? Um, I'm not here to go through all those fields. I'm just here to basically say that look at extensive help. Look at the help. You know, whatever screen that you're on, okay, uh, no matter if it's, you know, list connections, uh, smart trace, or anywhere in the product, just do PF1. Do, just do a help command. And if there's a particular field that you're taking a look, you know, you're, you're trying to decide, you know, to decipher what it is, the information uh, that you're looking at, just do the help. And we have, like I said, you know, extensive help throughout the product where if there's a field that's being displayed on the screen in that master, we will have help for it. And then just, just go from there to, you know, to, to basically, you know, help you along to decide basically if that helps, you know, whatever diagnostic situation that you're looking into. So now we're like taking a look at the data here, okay, is that we have a web portal now. And in the web portal, it's the, it's the same information that we can take a look on the green screen, just, you know, it's just a nice display of the information. So as an example, the cipher details, you know, we can break that down, you know, you can take a look at that, what cipher is being used, what version. The actual security level is something that we actually go out to an INA website and basically it tells us whether that particular cipher is weak or, or, or not. Okay, so it's not something that we, you know, the Netmaster team decides whether that's weak. It's it's something that actually an internet board has is that we we actually can make the request and ask, you know, from a website to say, hey, is this something that you know that's and what is the, the strength of that particular cipher as an example? And by the way, that's only on the web portal that does that. You won't see that particular information on the TN3270. So this is an example of you know getting TLS information. As Anna had uh, had indicated, ZERT allows TLS, it does SSH, it does IPsec. So go to the next slide. This is almost the same screen, but then what what we have here, we have SSH information, okay? So every piece of ZERT data based upon what type of secured connection it is will be different. And, and once again, if you do have questions, just do help as an example, and then the help will give you some additional information as to what all these specific uh, fields on the screen provide. And then this is a just a, a snapshot of what a uh, connection looks like on the web portal of everything together, right? This is the, the connection detail information. You, you see the connection itself, which is provided by the packet analyzer. Then you're going to see information that's going to be provided by actually other 
APIs. And then at the bottom, you're going to see it actually assert information. So it's, it's, um, what it's meant to show here is, is that how NetMaster can accumulate data from a variety of different places. And what we do is, is we attempt to take all that data as much as possible, combine it in a nice presentable way so that, you know, you have all this information that's gathered. So that's displayed on the screen for you in one place. And lastly, as far as the desert and diagnostic side of the house, okay, uh, as Anna had mentioned as well, IPsec is supported, okay, IPsec information, secure information is provided. And what we do is, is we have, we've always had enterprise extender, we've had a robust enterprise extender support. And with, with that, using the ZERT detailed data, we can then on the enterprise extender uh, support that we have for those particular connections, we've added a field, whether it's secured or not, then you can then select that particular field. And then the IKE tunnel, what we can do is that the SEC tunnel details will, will allow you to, to see certain information as far as how that is secured. And once again, this is something that, you know, was not, you know, something that was available before the ZERT detail records. So now we get into the, the historical side of it, right? This is the aspect I was talking about, the business applications, how we have this thing called the IP log and allows you to save up to seven days worth of data. Um, what I like to point out here is, is, you know, as an example, if you were to, let's say you were, uh, somebody came in on a, uh, a connection in this case, it was a secured connection, but it came in in a half hour period of time. Okay, that and it's using a secured a cipher that that should not be being used as an example. This just gives you the an example of you know the the criteria power that you can you can use the product to actually isolate and kind of focus on uh, particular connections that happen during that period of time. So here. August 12th between 10:45 and 11:15, and I'm looking for any secured connection that has that specific negotiated cipher. So as we look to the next slide, it found a particular connection, and this you know, and it might have been just it could be many, it could be just one. And what I've done here is I just selected it. Okay, so this is information that heretofore was not available to us. It was before all we had from IP history was that we only had the information as far as like the quad and, and some other little bit of information to go along with it. Now you can see we, we have a whole a series of secured information that we gathered from the ZERT detailed data, okay, and the connection itself. We now just combine the ZERT detailed data into the connection. Packet Analyzer basically combines, correlates all that information together, and then if it needs, needs to be saved, it sends it on over to NetMaster and it saves this, all this great information that you can now basically take a look at, you know, as you got a detailed information that you want to look for on an IP history particular record. So this brings us to the, the, the security visibility across the stack. I always tend to think of it like a status at a glance, you know, status at a glance being something that you got a lot of data and basically looking at status, you're looking at information combined, summarized up into something that becomes a lot more meaningful, right? Uh, as an example, uh, what we have here is, is we have, we provide data in, in, in actually two different manners, okay? It's, it's actually the data as it stands right now, okay? In the sense that right now I got a home address here on this stack at 84.32 there I have, at this moment in time, I got 702 active connections where I know that 472 of them are, are secured. So we can get into the situation that you might want to think that, oh, you know, we expect all of our connections to be secured. Why, why isn't that? Uh, so then you can take a look at this, you know, in, encryption summary and start drilling down to see, you know, what is up with that kind of thing. Potentially, let's say you have, you know, a combination of version 1.2 and 1.3 would allow you to then continue to drill down and look at those specific connections. Potentially, let's say if you're only interested in 1.3 connections, you know, then you could 
basically then just look at those. So once again, the status at a glance, here is the real time information. We also break that down, okay, by the task name. As you can see, we have two different kind of toggled views. One view is, is the, the home addresses themselves. And then we actually break it down by the task name itself. Okay, is it CICS, is it WebSphere? Is it, you know, what particular application is the one that's actually using it? So you can reverse look at that and look to see which connections are being secured and which ones are not being secured. Then we have the, the summary totals. What's happening is, is the, the packet analyzer, as we know, coming out of the SSI is keeping all these buckets, you know, over the course of the time that the SSI is up and operational, it's keeping buckets of the various information uh, as to how many uh, connections were actually secured, how many connections were not secured. Actually, we, the buckets are, are kept, as you can see, by the, the all the different tasks that have opened up connections in the course of the time that the packet analyzer has been active. You can see that it, it breaks it down by various, all the different levels of the security, 1.2, 1.3, SSH, IPsec. So you can actually see over the course of time, you know, if, if you're thinking everything should be at one particular level, you can you can see, you know, uh, right in, visually in front of you that, you know, what is happening in your particular network. So not only that, then what you can do is, is an example, if I see some connections that are unsecured, I can use the U, I can, I can, I can use this particular panel to continue to drill down on any set of connections that, you know, that are unsecured as an example, and then continue on doing, you know, diagnostics on that, on that side of the house. So, yeah, so the encryption summary totals allow you to basically see at a status at a glance what, what had happened over the course of time. And one of the things is we just introduced is the reset connections. Zert allows us to, okay, it tells us, informs us that if any, any um, connections that were reset based upon policy-based enforcement, that'll show up as well. So that's another a nice piece of information such that you, know, you can see that, okay, your your policy-based enforcement is, is working like you think it should be, that it is actually doing its job, it's resetting connections where it should be resetting. You can see how it breaks it down by the task name. So that is it, you know, if you got policy-based enforcement on specific task, is it really working like you think it should be working? And this is the web portal view of the same information I just discussed from the 3270. What it does is you can then you got it toggles between two buttons. You got the active, and you'll be able to take a look at the active connections at this moment in time. A lot of information right in front of you, basically, as you can see, right. And then you got the total, and then the toggle between the totals. Uh, and the same thing on there. It also has a column on the reset, so you can see how many of the connections were reset by the policy. And last but not least is this thing called the event detectors. Is something I, I wish that the customers would utilize more because it's it's a wonderful thing because the packet analyzer is doing a lot of work, right? It's doing a lot of things and it can check a lot of different things in real time and you can be notified in real time of potentially some serious problems. So this is just something else that we've added on to the event detector. This is going to be the TCP SEC E event detector and what it allows you to do is, is, is it creates a vast set of criteria that you can specify, okay, to try to capture those connections that are not meeting the secured criteria that you think. It goes from anything to anything less than TLS 1.2. I want you to tell me about, I want you to alert. We actually, the criteria has something you like. If it's, if it's TLS 1.1, if you, if you want to capture one specific connection that you know that's using 1.1, you can do that as well. So, and, and then of course it has, you know, I want to capture anything that's not secured. If it's unsecured, I want to capture that as well. So it's a very powerful part of the product, okay? And then it has all the alerting capabilities, as you can imagine. Okay, and so then from there, you know, you can basically, and the, the screenshot on the right shows an email had been sent because we had a protocol TLS 1.1 when it should be, you know, TLS 1.2 as an example. So it's a very powerful event detector, and I'm just hoping that, you know, we get more utilization out of this event detector.
Anna and I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, we have some time left over. We have an open forum and please, uh, any questions, uh, we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. So um, I have uh, opened up the lines. So if you've got any questions to ask, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask or pop them in the um, chat box. Okay, it looks like we've got no questions. Um, thank you very much, Anna and Steve. Uh, much appreciated. Um, we'll end the call here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.